Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing uh, Podcast. We are back with another edition of Quick Hits. Got a fun show for you today. Uh, we're going to get to Terrence Crawford and who his next opponent may be. Uh, obviously, there's a big name, the Unification Fight, and then there's two other possible opponents. Um, before we get into that, please share, like, and subscribe. Please comment below. Uh, please uh, hit the bell icon, get notifications every time a new show drops. Uh, Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10. Eight to ten minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, also, um, the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. Please uh, like and subscribe and share that channel as well. All proceeds from that channel go to autism research and recovery. So we want to get that up and running, uh, get that monetized as quickly as possible. Uh, at Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Uh, please uh, subscribe to that channel as well. Uh, but let's get into today's show. Terrence Bud Crawford coming off what I think is, uh, you know, given the level of opposition, his best win. Uh, it's a really good performance. Um, you know, I had him down six to three on my card, and I'm a Bud fan. Somehow, all three judges in Vegas that night had him up, even though no one watching the fight had him up, um, which was one of the judges that only gave three rounds to Sean Porter, which is spectacular. I mean, that is unbelievable. The judges build their cards out before they got there, uh, which is fine. Um, you know, Terrence Crawford's corner thought they were losing the fight um, because in reality they were. I mean, there's only three people who didn't think he was losing it. Those were the judges. And it's always, it's always odd uh, when the only people who think he's losing are the people scoring the fight. But it doesn't matter. It's all material because Terrence Crawford delivered it in a big way. In a big way, he scored a sensational knockout. Um, he scored two knockdowns. It, it was kind of Canelo esque against Caleb Plant or uh, Javante Tank Davis esque against Mario Barros. When he needed to get the knockout, he went out and got it. Um, it was really impressive stuff by Terrence Crawford. And it's kind of changed the narrative on Terrence Crawford. Uh, people would say Crawford's no good, he's washed, um, he, he doesn't fight anybody good. And that completely changed the narrative. Now we're all ready for the Spence fight. We all want to see the Spence fight. Um, my guess is, I, I don't know. Um, I, I do think the Spence fight's going to happen late in 2022, the second half of 2022. The only question is, does Crawford fight before that? Uh, does Crawford fight somebody else um, early? Does he fight twice? He hasn't fought twice in one year in a while. I think he should. I think everyone should fight twice in a year. Uh, but it's only been fighting once a year. You know, Spence has been out for a while. There's been some weird stuff going on in boxing. Um the other two names, obviously, for, for, for Crawford, and it, like, if Crawford takes the fight, these are two legitimate names, um, and, and he could lose. I, I You know, I, I'd pick him, but he could, you know, they're real fights. Uh, the first name, obviously, Josh Taylor, um, the undisputed welterweight, uh, junior welterweight champion, who's going to move up to 147 eventually, long-rangey guy built similarly to Crawford, like Crawford was the undisputed 140-pound champion. This is a real fight. Uh, I do think Crawford's better. I think Crawford, I, although I think Taylor had a more difficult run to become undisputed at 140, um, I, I, I think Crawford's better, right? And I, I think Crawford fills out 47 better, although Taylor's pretty big. You know, Taylor making 40 those days, I, I would think, have to be coming to an end. He's really, really big for the size. He's long. He's rangy. He's got good pop. He's, like, this comparisons – from what he does to what Crawford does, I just think Crawford does it better. Although, look, both guys are top 10 pound for pound guys. Uh, both guys are, are, are at the, you know, still at the peak of their game. So it, it's a great fight. Um, I just don't know that, you know, he that Taylor does anything good enough to beat Crawford, even though, and I, and I think the world of Taylor, I, I, I just don't see how he beats Crawford. It could be a fun fight. He may win some rounds. He could be really competitive. I just don't see how he gets over the hump and beats him. Um, the other name, obviously, Virgil Ortiz, uh, the young phenom from Grand Prairie, Texas, which is in the Dallas area. Uh, I mean, he's knocked out everyone. Uh, and this is the one I guess Crawford might win this fight. Um, this could be a changing of the guard fight. Um, 
you know, Virgil Ortiz is going to be in position, you would think, where he could challenge for either the WBO or the WBC. Um, he, he's going to fight Avenisian, um, which would, if he wins that fight, um, he'd be the mandatory for the WBC belt as well. Um, obviously, that would set up a fight with Errol Spence. Um he fights Spence. You know, both guys are from the Dallas area. We do that at Cowboys. It would be a spectacular, unbelievable fight. Um, but he could also, again, like he could fight with Crawford. And, and Crawford told him to go beat the Mean Machine. He, he beat him up, stopped him in eight rounds. Um, really, really unbelievable performance by Virgil Ortiz. Kept, kept dropping him. I mean, beat him up. Um, a really good fighter. You know, after he had stopped Hooker in seven, you know, Virgil Ortiz is a guy. He's 18-0 with 18 knockouts, um, and, and he's not been ha- given, you know, tuna cans. He's not fought tomato cans on the way up. He's fought in good fighters. Um, and he's progressively got better. Tony Orozco, um, Samuel Vargas, you know, um, uh, Mauricio Herrera. He's fought solid names, you know, the last two or three years. Um, so what he's done is highly impressive. He's, he's a killer. He's fundamentally really sound. Um, his footwork is great. He's got great feet, and the power behind is phenomenal. He comes in different angles and just beats you up. This is a great fight, um, and this could be the changing of the guard fight. Could is Virgil Ortiz ready? And even if he is ready, even if he's at his peak, is that good enough to be Crawford? Because Crawford's an all-time great fighter. Um, that's the kind of fight we want to see. You know, does does Crawford do to Virgil what um, does, does Crawford do to Virgil what Mayweather did to Canelo? I don't know, maybe, right? Crawford's a great fighter, uh, but 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 so is um, Virgil Ortiz is this <laughs> upstart who's been destroying everyone. Um, so those are the two other fights besides the Spence fight. Um, if if you asked me to rank them, I, I would go Ortiz two and and Taylor three. Although all fights are great, um, you know, I, I I my my inkling, if I had to guess, if I had to pick, I do think we get Josh Taylor next and. Uh, Errol Spence at the end of the year. And, you know, Crawford can basically, if he wins those two fights, he can basically run out the clock and retire an all-time great fighter. You know, I don't know what he would do with that. Maybe he wants to go to 154, try to win a belt there. I don't know. But if Crawford wins those fights, Crawford is, is you know, undisputed at 147. Beat Porter, beat Spence, beat, beat. And I'm not saying he beats these guys, beat Taylor. Um, I mean, he's there. He's 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 arrived. He, his, his, his legacy is... Rock solid. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Um, I mean, those are the three names. Is there anyone else you think is a realistic possibility that he could fight next? Remember, he's a free agent. Terrence Crawford's a free agent. He can fight anybody. Um, you know, Bob Aram said he wants to promote Crawford fights. He doesn't want to promote Crawford, though, which is an interesting. The pay-per-view numbers came in. They were only 190. It's not a great number. You know, it was kind of weird the way ESPN did it. You had to have the app to buy the fight, which was weird and strange. It didn't make much sense to me why they would do that, why they'd keep it from people. Um, you know, people who buy paid reviews, you know, maybe don't know how to stream it illegally. You know, maybe they don't, <laughs> you know. Um, it, it seems like pay view is an older demographic thing. And then you put it behind his app, which is a younger demographic. He didn't make a lot of sense and didn't do a great number. And he's just not a star. You know, um, Bob Aaron was talking about 500,000 to a million plus. Like, that's not going to happen, especially when you hide it like this. Um, They're not doing a good job promoting Terrence Crawford. And and now Terrence Crawford's on his own. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, It is November 23rd, 2021. Uh, Ivan Calderon is still in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Let's get Ivan Calderon in uh, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside.